Okay. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for the uh, introduction. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'm a uh, storage system engineer at FedEx. Uh, as you may know, it's uh, the company behind TikTok. And our team uh, works on storage engine databases and the file systems. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, today, I'm going to uh, share uh, a, a demo of uh, our you know, Zen has a where uh, cache system that's built for a distributed databases. And uh, the general idea is quite simple, I believe. Uh, yeah, but I believe some of the idea may uh, provide, you know, uh, important information for you, uh, for anyone that has the similar use cases. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, the product is uh, you know, called Zoom Store, and uh, I will basically explain the use case in uh, five sections. Uh, yeah, as always, motivation, problem, solution, benchmarks, and conclusion. Um, okay, uh, the uh, first part, of course, uh, motivation. Uh, why would we want to implement another local cache storage engine? Uh, on the left part of the slide, uh, it's a high-level architecture of our you know, HCAP database. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see this picture clearly. Uh, it seems a little bit small uh, than I expected. <laughs> okay, uh, HCAP stands for hybrid serving and analytical uh, platform. Uh, it's, uh, it's one of uh, the main databases that we use at Bedance. Uh, this database prefer you know latency sensitive uh, user cases, and uh, uh, we don't care too much uh, transaction. No. So latency is is very important here. Um, on the picture, the, the middle layer of the picture uh, is a data store, which it will takes care of a user queries and uh, uh, load data from remote storage system. Uh, the uh, remote storage system usually is a uh, HDFS cluster or other you know, uh, cloud storage systems. So um, uh, to accelerate the uh, data store's performance, we of course would put a uh, cache layer uh, in it. And uh, this local cache uses both you know, DRAM and uh, uh, SSD. Sometimes we use persistent memory, uh, like you know, uh, everybody uses often uh, yeah, but it costs too much. <laughs> uh, okay, um, this database serves so many products, and some of the products have long data paths that across many other different products. So uh, we have three requirements for the local cache: uh, low cache miss rate, best performance, or more specifically, uh, predictable performance, and of course, low cost. Okay. Since the remote storage has a uh, you know, much larger access granularity, uh, usually it's two megabytes in, in most cases, we cannot bear a high cache miss rate, which leads to you know, a large table latency. But how do we improve the cache hit rate? The simplest way is to you know, enlarge our local cache capacity. And the second requirement is predictable performance. As I said previously, uh, the HCEP database is latency sensitive. We can take relatively large average latency, but we cannot bear latency spikes because large average latency can usually be handled you know, by the client side cache. Um, but we can do nothing uh, to, to deal with latency spike. And I will, I, I will explain why latency spike happens, uh, why, latency, uh, why latency spike is important later. Uh, the last requirement is uh, we want a lower uh, storage cost. Mm, okay. Uh, yeah, everyone loves low cost, of course. <laughs> yeah, let me see. Uh, okay. Uh, the, the second part is um, uh, is existing, you know, a solution. Why we 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 want to replace it? Uh, we uh, previously used uh, TerraDB. Which is a fork of a RocksDB, uh, and it uses everything tree as its uh, core data structure. Uh, in case any any of you don't know RocksDB, I have two figures on the left. Uh, these two figure figures copied from uh, a uh, paper from ATC. Um, yeah, 
the uh, RSM tree has multiple level and is a per periodically compaction, uh, compact high level files uh, to lower levels. So it will uh, trigger a lot of uh, red amplification. Okay, um, we observed three main problems from TerraDB. The first one is there are too many latency spikes, which we cannot accept. The reasons are uh, background compaction sometimes costs too much disk bandwidth, and we cannot you know, precisely control when and how the compaction uh, happens. So uh, the user thread may somehow uh, blocked uh, by the you know, background compaction. Besides this, uh, the read is also you know, uh, has its problem because a single read on RSM3 could possibly need to read through all levels, uh, which means high read amplification. Uh, this is the first problem. And the second one is um, user side throughput is not good as uh, we expected. Uh, the user side throughput here means you know, a valid throughput, which are the user data that, uh, which, you know, uh, how to say that, uh, the user side throughput is uh, the user actually read into the system, okay? In most cases, the valid throughput is under 150 megabytes per second, but we all know that modern SSD can, you know, easily provide over uh, maybe one gigabyte read throughput, uh, but the red amplification, uh, red amplification is, uh, you know, too high. So the user size throughput is not good enough. Uh, okay. Uh, the reason to this problem is that it's uh, the RASDB or TerraDB, uh, it has, you know, warlock, uh, warlock writes, memory paper flash, background compaction, and uh, it also has file system internal red amplification. So yeah, the overall, the uh, uh, red amplification is, is much higher than we uh, expected. The last problem is that uh, space amplification. This one uh, may, you know, uh, ignored by a lot of developers or, or yeah. And uh, TerraDB has at least 20% garbage, garbage, you know, space uh, garbage rate uh, and, uh, uh, I mean, under a heavy write workload. Uh, to make sure we didn't use up all space, we also have to keep at least another 10% disk space, uh, yeah, uh, to keep it safe. And uh, uh, this doesn't include the disk internal OP space. So uh, some of them up, we could possibly waste 30% to, you know, 40% at most uh, disk, disk space uh, in real world storage system, which is uh, quite terrible. Yeah, uh, that's our previous problem. Okay, to uh, uh, address this is these problems, we uh, came up with a few uh, ideas. And um, uh, first, uh, I would say uh, the use case is specifically designed for cache system, not a general purpose storage engine. So uh, we could have a lot of assumptions which helps us making things right. Yeah, it's not a general purpose. Sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, we designed the cache system in a zoomed aware idea. Uh, okay, sorry for the picture on the left, a little bit small. Um, anyway, we divided the uh, device into multiple, uh, the, we divided the device LBA into multiple zooms and zoom groups. In, and uh, this design uh, allow us to use not only conventional SD, but also we could use different types of uh, CNS SD. Yeah, here a zoom group uh, is the, the, the concept of a zoom group is borrowed from a Samsung yeah, zoom group. Okay. Um, for each zoom group, we write data and uh, we write the data and the metadata separately, and the metadata zooms only describe the data within current zoom group. If there's only one zoom in the zoom group, we would cache the metadata. Uh, we would cache the metadata, and uh, uh, when uh, before the zoom was finished, we will append the metadata uh, into that that zoom. Yeah, in case some uh, some uh, vendor has only one uh, big uh, zoom. Yeah, West Digital has one, one one super big zoom. Okay. 
Uh, now uh, I will talk, I will work through the uh, general ideas for this design. Um, first, in-memory database, yeah, in-memory metadata and uh, record level uh, indexing. We could make uh, this happen mainly because like the, our record size is quite large. Uh, usually, the record size is larger than 100 k uh, kilobytes uh, because we have DRAM to provide a, to provide a smaller access granularity. Yeah, um, and the record level indexing makes it possible to have no extra read amplification. We can uh, get our value from a single I.O. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, straightforward. Um, and then, of course, we enable the open only I.O. model uh, to uh, use ZSSD. Maybe in the future, we can use ZS QRC uh, SSD. And uh, the background GC will also need to follow this open only rule. So, yeah, then as aware. Um, one of the most important parts is user managed GC and emergency uh, data sacrifice. Since there's no internal GC inside the NS device, we can reset a zone quite fast and uh, we, we, we can self control when it happens. So, we could use almost all disk space without worrying out worrying out of a space error. And uh, in case the worst case, you know, uh, maybe we sh we don't have a zoom that uh, fall over it is garbage, and uh, we are running out of space. We uh, yeah, since we are a cache system, we allow some data to be sacrificed. So uh, in that case, we will draw some valid data and notify the uh, cache policy uh, system. Yeah, we have a uh, cache policy on top of uh, this storage engine. Yeah, so uh, users can notice that we, we don't have that data anymore. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, we enlarged the uh, cache capacity by almost like 30 percent. Uh, uh, and uh, the trade-off is that we may lose some data, but uh, the overall benefit is acceptable to us. And uh, yes, let me see. Um, to okay, I think that's another slide. Yeah, okay. Uh, and to avoid the emergency data, emergency data sacrifice uh, as much as possible, because any anyway, we, we don't want to do that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we will group data together based on their hardness, and uh, so we have a hardness, a hardness linked list. We will link uh, different zones with their hardness tag, and uh, we also have a garbage read uh, linked list. So we will select the um, uh, the, the text zone that uh, will be sacrificed later or, or migrate later. Uh, Based on these two uh, two variables, yeah, okay. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, we would like to use QRC SSD, but currently we don't get any of them. Yeah, maybe in, in next or yeah, in the future, one or three years, we would have ZNS QRC SSD. Uh, in that case, we would get a much better capacity. Okay, um, the future works. Future works of this cache system besides the two existing lists, uh, we are prepared to add a cache policy awareness list in the future and the global uh, garbage collection or global data placement across you know, all disks on local server. Okay, that's the uh, basic ideas, uh, quite simple. <laughs> because we are a cache system. Okay. Um, oh. Uh, okay. okay. Next page. Uh, benchmarks. Uh, let's see the results. Um, you know there are a few benchmarks results I would love to share you. The last part is one of the paper that we published before. It shows that on a conventional SSD, uh, I uh, compared TerraDB on uh, XT4 and uh, Zoom Store on a you know a block device uh, directly. And uh, Zoom Store has a much better QPS, especially for write-heavy workloads. Uh, you know, the, the, the blue part is uh, Zoom Store. We can see the QPS is much higher, especially for write. Um, some of you guys may ask, isn't cache system always runs on you know, read-heavy workloads? 
the answer is um, the answer is yes. But uh, for online services, we always pay more attention for those you know end user use cases. This is because general cases are easy to be handled, but in euro cases, you know, uh, with you know, especially for read write uh, mixed workload, and uh, sometimes uh, heavy write uh, usually you know triggers uh, problem. So yeah, we um, don't want our system to be cracked in that scenario. Okay. Uh, the REST site, we test the Zoom store and they're both converted SD and the Zen SSD. Uh, we can see uh, on, 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 the, on the table, uh, the Zoom store on, oh, oh, let me see. Yeah, uh, the, the REST site of this table, Zoom store on Zen SSD, it, has, uh, it still has much higher throughput than uh, Zoom store and conventional SSD because uh, we can completely handle garbage collection. We can decide when to sacrifice data, when uh, when to migrate data, when to do the you know background DC, how to group the data, yeah, that's uh, the uh, about fifty percent improvement, even uh, compared with this self on capacity. Okay, uh, the uh, conclusion. Okay, um, it's quite simple. Yeah, only two of them. The first one is Zoom. Zoom device, I believe, is a super fit, a super fit to catch system because uh, we can we can reset any Zoom as we want, and uh, catch systems usually don't care too much about data you know, durability. So uh, yeah, it's super fit. And the second one is uh, right amplification causes too much problems. Not only rest uh, rest bags, but also uh, you know valid user throughput uh, cannot. Uh, exceed uh, our expectations. So yeah, that's uh, basically the uh, conclusion. OK, uh, I think uh, my time is up, and that's everything. Thank you. OK, okay that's it. That's it. Test, test. Questions? Anybody have any questions? Simple. I, yeah. I had one question. Uh, so, okay. so your user space, um, uh, are you using raw the block device access? Or are you using some of the plumbing like like uh, Zone FS, right? So, uh, how are you? How how did you build uh -huh. the your stack on the user space side? Yeah, uh, we we use uh, you know the raw block device directly. We don't uh, build it on top of uh, Zone FS or Zone FS. It's quite straightforward. Yeah. Oh, here's the. I'll throw the mic over to the mic. Over. <laughs> All right. Hi, Quan. Uh, uh, I'll I'll talk about caching and and, and cache lib uh, later. But did you consider using cache lib and adapting that for your use? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe I, I didn't test it yet because I uh, I didn't aware of that uh, library uh, before we decided to do do this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, all right, but I will talk about that later, so we can maybe continue the discussion then. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.